brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries. In the weeks ahead, you will see these and other programs by various denominations. I'm Richard Thompson, and this is Austin Faith Dialogue. Our topic of discussion for today is creative religious education. This is Austin Faith Dialogue, a public affairs program discussing the important crossroad of religion in life, produced by Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KTBC-TV. Austin Faith Dialogue highlights the interaction of the religious community with the social and cultural issues throughout our area. Now, today's edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. For many of us, United States religious education brings back memories of Sunday school and vacation Bible school, times in which we learned about our church and its traditions. But all times have changed, and so have the ways in which we teach our young people about all these issues, as even other faith traditions become the subject of discussion and learning. Today we will have occasion to learn about the Native American tradition, as this was communicated in a vacation church school in St. Luke's Methodist Church here in Austin and in the Clarksville area. And we're pleased today to have persons who are instrumental in bringing that forth to our community and to their own faith community. We welcome from St. Luke's Methodist Church our two guests. I would like first of all to say Terry Dowdy as the pastor of that church. We're looking forward to hearing how you helped initiate that. And Nancy Sullivan, you were the director of the Vacation Church School this past summer, in which that emphasis upon Native American tradition was uh, made the focal point. Uh, tell us a little bit, Nancy, if you would, about uh, how that happened to come about. Native Americans has been a topic that uh, we considered trying a year ago. And uh, through a year's worth of study and research, this came to pass through the curriculum that I wrote and uh, that we implemented through our church school in, uh, in the summer. Okay, so this is something you had to write. I mean, the Methodists weren't turning out materials about <laughs> no. the subject, right? No, there were no materials available that we could actually take it into the classroom with the children. So uh, I spent several months uh, from September through December researching uh, across the country and writing letters and making phone calls and then wrote it and put it together from about uh, January until, uh, until we put it on in July. All right. Well, Terry, I have to tell you that uh, the Presbyterians don't turn out materials like that either. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. And, uh, I, and I suspect that that wouldn't have happened in your congregation without your support and maybe some of your own input on that. Huh? I worked hard at it. Nancy called me the week after our vacation church school last year and said, what do you think about maybe doing Native American next year? And I said, Okay, go with it. That's what I did. That's how hard you worked. <laughs> That's huh? how hard I worked, and she, <laughs> she went with it. Yeah. Uh, I also wound up with the task of trying to interpret what we were doing to others um, in our church and outside of our church mm -hmm. as to why we're doing Native American instead of um, the Gospel of Mark or, right. or something. Well, uh, why? Why are you doing that? Or did you do that? Uh, because we... Uh, understood this to be a way that we could get at some some common themes that we deal with in Christianity but to get at it in some in some other ways that would help us and our children uh, see things um, a little differently and, and maybe see things more clearly by looking outside of ourselves looking to another culture another religion looking at their stories uh, how they um, how they understood the, the world and life to be and, and the meaning of those things and then and then to come back to our own stories our own mm -hmm. texts and traditions to better understand our own stuff but well, now in uh, in colleges they have comparative religions are you, are you seeking to do something of the same kind of thing in your church in, in an in an earlier more controlled way I don't like the word control that much but um, my experience with a, a lot of kids who go to college is, is that they're steeped in their Christian tradition, a very limited tradition, go to college and then they find out about things like Zen Buddhism and Hinduism and other things that, that have truth in them. Mm -hmm. And, and that their eyes are opened and they, 
they go and they jump off and go off into something else. This way, we get people to see the truth of, of religion and, and still be able to come back to our own religion and see the truth in our own religion. Okay. That's what I have in mind. Well, I think that gives a, a theological rationale for what was done. And meanwhile, since you had this vision, or helped support the vision, then you let Nancy do the work. I yes. mean, it sounds <laughs> like a very decent thing for him to have done. <laughs> and, uh, but it sounds like you might not have minded going into it the way you did. You maybe you enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I have some teacher background and have been at home, though, for about 10 years with my children. And this provided me an opportunity to put some of the teaching skills that I have to work. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the research and the, the communication that I had with many people across the country. And, uh, and then the challenge of putting it into a form in which children from ages 3 through 5th grade could actually learn about Native Americans and their cultures. Okay, well, let's uh, just pause for a moment and focus on how it is that you come about by those materials. I mean, I, I suspect you had to go a bit far afield and maybe some things that surprised you near at home. Just give us a sense of how you access that. Oh, I started by uh, going to the library, finding some books on Native Americans and looking in the bibliographies and then just calling numbers and writing letters across the country. Mm -hmm. That was that was it. Um, and then there was a, uh, the challenge of finding a way to organize the material. There was, okay. there was many things coming up. Okay, so you, you did the, the book route, mm -hmm. but you've done more, uh, did more than that, is that correct? Yes. I mean, what yes, else did, did you do to make it alive? For, oh, for we have a, a friend of mine, Daniel Giannis, uh, is, um, uh, we used him as a resource for our church school and had him come uh, and bring the, the dance, the sun dance, alive to the children. All right. And we'll look forward to having Daniel on the show a little later on. Mm -hmm. But he, he demonstrated what yes. uh, this uh, culture represents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Terry, I want, speaking of dancing, I, I just have to <laughs> recollect that you were on the show before. Yes. We, uh, we did a body prayer program. Do you remember that? I remember that. <laughs> And uh, I, I got the impression, the distinct impression, that you were into sort of faith and dance mode then. I mean, were you in the Bible school as well? Well, as a matter of fact, in Vacation Church School last year, we did a Native American body prayer with the children. And that really, I think, is, is what set this idea of Native <coughs> American uh, going was, was a, a year ago. Uh -huh. And we did some... In fact, there was one uh, Native American body prayer that we did throughout the week, which was sort of our, our theme for the week. Okay. S again, the thought is, unlike s so often in so many churches where people kind of were in a passive posture and maybe stand up and sit down for the hymn, uh, this is a religion that is uh, active in, in that regard. Movements stretching out and, and reaching yourself out to the interconnectedness of the universe. Mm -hmm. That's one of the themes we dealt with this okay. week. Okay. Well, one of the things, too, that I feel is really important from the standpoint of our viewers who are looking at this as a model, in a sense, <clears throat> of creative religious education, that uh, the, the Sunday school movement, including the, the church, vac vacation church school aspect of it, is only oh, a little over 200 years old. And we, we tend to think, well, this has been around since New Testament times, and actually it's a relatively r recent invention mm -hmm. of the religious community. <coughs> of Methodism. As a and of it started with Methodism. Oh, I can feel a plug coming right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, tell us how it started with Methodism. Terry. Well, with John Wesley's classes was really the beginnings of, of, what, of our modern-day Sunday school. Uh-huh. All right, well, I... Where people get together once a week and say, okay, how did your week go, and how are you going to do it better next week? Mm-hmm. Okay. So the, the Baptists and the Lutherans and the Presbyterians even... That's right. You thank for that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, but... The, and the idea, too, is that this is an evolving, ongoing, growing kind of uh, experience uh, in, in the land. And, and what you've done here is to show how there's a new wrinkle to this not only possible but desirable with uh, the other faith traditions being recognized and in this case 
one that has, uh, I think, I just wonder if you, if this had anything to do with 1992, when uh, there was a particular emphasis on Native American contributions to this continent before Columbus showed up. Was that, was that uh, part of your rationale for doing it that way? That was part of it. Uh, it, it went beyond that also. Uh, I want to give the kids a sense of tradition and of history. Uh, if it weren't for the indigenous population to the Americas, things would be very different. Mm -hmm. And we have forgotten about that. And that was one of the reasons for bringing it to the children okay. at the early age that we did. Good. Well, we'll come back to that after the break when we'll have a chance to talk to Daniel. And in the meantime, I'd like to thank you, Terry, for having been with us on this thank segment you. of our show. My pleasure. And uh, we'd like to have you folks stay tuned in for a little bit more of our discussion on creative religious education. But uh, now this. Serving Austin means serving you. Each day, Austin Metropolitan Ministries is religion in action, providing affordable housing, caring for the elderly, marching against hunger, and much more. AMM promotes understanding, cooperation, and social involvement. So when we ask for your help, we're really asking to help you, Austin. To find out how you can help Austin Metropolitan Ministries help Austin through its member organizations, just call 472-7627. Welcome back to Austin Faith Dialogue. The video clip that you just saw was the Clarksville Sundance, as it was based on the traditional Sundance and performed by Native American Daniel Giannis. And we're glad to have you with us on the show now, Daniel, to Thanks. join Nancy. Appreciate it. And um, I, I think that the main thing that as we looked at that, got the sense of how, as part of the, the Vacation Church School at St. Luke's Methodist Church last summer, you were brought in to uh, share the tradition in a very active way. Yeah. And tell us about the Sundance as the focal point of that. Well, um, I, uh, uh, Nancy had contacted me about uh, this project they were doing at St. Luke's, which I was thrilled to, to see uh, not only uh, any organization, but a church organization actually um, extending its education to its children beyond its own parameters. And uh, we know each other through uh, the Clarksville, Neil Clarksville neighborhood, and through Matthews. Our kids go to Matthews. And uh, I periodically do programs at Matthews. And since in the last few years, uh, my uh, endeavors as an artist have been focused around Native American culture, uh, it was, it fit. Mm -hmm. mm. So when we did, <clears throat> when Nancy approached me, she wanted to have something um, live or, or something of the tradition uh, of Native American culture, and so I, I suggested the Sundance, uh, especially when I went to the to the church and saw that tree there. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, I was fortunate in par to participate in the third of the four Sundances of. of um, they're called the Universal Sundances of Four Colors, and it was uh, the fulfillment of Crazy Horse's vision. And in 1992. Um, Many, many tribes from all over the Americas participated in four dance, sun dances, three here in the United States and one in Mexico. And uh, um, it signaled the time of, of the integration, actually. And so I thought this was very appropriate for the children uh, at St. Luke's. And uh, we call it the Clarksville Sundance because every tribe has their own Sundance. And so I thought that um, we would initiate our own in our, in our own area. Okay, so you're contributing to the tradition in that way. Tradition lives, uh, and, and to me, uh, tradition is whatever is manifest today. 
of all the things that we know from the past. Mm -hmm. And that is how tradition is kept alive. Okay, well, I think that, uh, Nancy, the, uh, the extent to which you were saying earlier that it wasn't just book learning that children are doing, but active kind of responses. Uh, give us a, your, your re recollection of how the children reacted to uh, Daniel's leadership in this regard. Daniel came on Thursday afternoon to introduce the idea of the Sundance to the children, and uh, they were very involved with Daniel. Uh, he brought his, uh, his bells, uh, so there was, there was hearing, there was the sage incense, mm -hmm. sage so there was the, the uh, uh, sense of smell, mm -hmm. uh, and, then, and Daniel had the children up and dancing, and so there was, there was involvement. The children loved it. Mm -hmm. Something that kids could really relate to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if, if I can uh, say one thing about, um, I guess, religious participation. Uh, the Native American cultures, um, by and large, are earth cultures. And in, in my study of, of art in, in the world, all the earth cultures have a, uh, a, a very tactile connection to their spirituality. That is, um, communing with God is to dance is to play music, is to sing, um, is to, to interact with one another. It's, it's a very tactile, a very alive mm -hmm. uh, way of worship, which um, being a dancer, I'm totally attracted to. Mm -hmm. And of course, children, I mean, you can't keep them down. So it's very, it's, it's natural. It's a very okay. natural thing. So it's they innate in all of us. Very readily relate to that, no sure. matter what the difference is in culture otherwise. Sure. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. And there's something you say about the Native American faith tradition <clears throat> in which the spirit is communicated through this rather uh, down-to-earth form. <laughs> yeah, since we are on the earth. For example, uh, I can just uh, tell you that um, the idea of footwork or of dancing is, um, is you're literally tapping on the mother, uh -huh. the mother earth. You're telling the mother, we're here, this is for you. Ah. This is very literal. Mm -hmm. uh, the whistles, for example, in some cultures are believed to um, to dispel any negativity, any, any, any bad thoughts. Um, you know, song is beautiful, mm -hmm. so it, it, it just conjures up good feelings. Um, the drum beats, the rattles are to move away all the evil spirits mm -hmm. and to clear the area. <laughs> uh -huh. The sage, the kopal, uh, those are all um, uh, elements of nature. They're, they're very fragrant in, in all, of the, all of the religions use that actually. Um, so so uh, the native cultures, the earth cultures are all it's it's a, it's a natural and so then then everyone can relate to it really. okay well that that helps take us beyond the appearance to the reality that it's signifying sure and <clears throat> i think that one of the things that um, i picked up on is that uh, you are a, a performer professionally mm -hmm. you're an artist by uh, in terms of your work but you you're doing this more than just uh professionally i Oh, sure. Before the show, you were sharing with me something of where you were coming to this, uh, where you're coming from personally on this. Mm -hmm. Could you just uh, add a word about that? Uh, yeah, well, the, um, you know, as a profession, I, I dance. Uh, I'm a choreographer and a musician and a composer. But uh, the reason I'm doing that is because, uh, because it's a calling. And uh, I started as a modern dancer and a ballet dancer many, many years ago. And in the last, I guess, eight or ten years, or a little longer now, I can't remember, I started taking an interest in, in indigenous culture um, as an artist. Mm -hmm. And of course, one thing led to another. And it's very, very gratifying. It's one of the most satisfying things that I do is, is, um, is the dances that are earth culture dances. Mm -hmm. And as a Native American that you Well, yeah. Uh, you know, and it's interesting, the, the term, because uh, I have been called a Mexican-American, Hispanic, uh, Chicano, all kinds of things. Um, what I do consider myself is, is to be a Native Texan. Mm -hmm. And as a Native Texan uh, and as a, a Mexican-American, my blood is both European and indigenous. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, having been raised in an English-speaking, even Hispanic, uh, Mexican, uh, Spanish-speaking culture, still European. I see. When I was about 30, I'm 44 now, when I was about 30, I started getting this feeling that I wanted to know more about the indigenous part of me since I'd been saturated with the European part of me. I got you. And uh, so that's, that actually started, it was those personal feelings that started me 
in my personal work and also in my professional mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. uh, going towards this. And so you find me here today All right. wearing bells and, and uh, playing whistles and things like that. Well, good for you. We're, <laughs> we're, just, we're just delighted you not only did it for the Bible school, but have given us something of a sense of what it's like in our being together today. And Nancy, I'd like to uh, come back to one thing you said earlier in the show about how this happened in 1992. Mm -hmm. And that while the, in the United States, the focus tended to be more on Columbus discovering America, that, that was, uh, there was a counter movement to that or a, a, a counterpoint to it in terms of people suddenly realizing, hey, there were folks here long before the Europeans showed up. And uh, the Sundance, uh, as uh, Daniel suggested, was the, a common con currency common practice among all the people in the Americas. And you were saying that you had picked up on that particular faith tradition in that year to reinforce uh, within the church the realization that uh, there's more to it than the conventional wisdom. Did it work that way? Do you think that people suddenly awoke to the fact that uh, people have been in this continent for a long time? I don't think it happened suddenly. Changes <laughs> like that are, are not sudden. I, what I hope that we did was to give these young kids and the parents and the teachers and the adults that helped with the church school a sense that, that things were going on in this country before Columbus supposedly discovered it. I hope that these kids will take with them a sense that there was a, a dignity and respect for the environment and for the way that uh, the land was. Um, it's, it's not going to happen suddenly. Um, but I'm hoping that we made some inroads uh, for these kids to realize that, that the populations that were here were very much in tune with what was going on in their environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, how do you uh, look at this uh, celebration we come to in October? Well, last year in terms of the... Uh, in 92, you mean? Yeah, 92. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's interesting because simultaneously, simultaneously there exist two worlds. Um, uh, the modern day world and the ancient world, which has always been um, kept alive through the Native American cultures here in the Americas. And um, the whole idea of, of celebrating Columbus coming in 1992 was countered and it was not sudden. It actually had been planned for many years, almost 20 years, by um, probably the oldest federation of uh, united peoples in the world. Mm -hmm. Here in all of the Americas and in 1992, we saw that. We saw all over this country and all over Mexico and South America, the indigenous populations actually surfacing and saying, hey, we're still here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very fortunate to be part of that too. And if I can just, just say that I, I appreciate so much what Terry and Nancy are doing and have done, and that's why I was really uh, not only honored but privileged to participate in this, because our education has to, our children have to know much, much more than is taught in the books and in the schools. And in regards to the history of the United States and the Americas, there's much, much more that we need to know that uh, the, the contributors to our, our own present day culture are, are rooted in, in eons of tradition that still lives. Okay. And you know, one of the things that uh, I've had occasion to learn too is that in October each year, there is a festival that goes on right in your neighborhood. Oh, Clarksville. Matthews. Uh, Do you feel another plug coming? I feel that, yes. <laughs> uh, tell us about that. Well, October Rama uh, happens at Matthews, and it's our uh, or our fall celebration, right? Uh -huh. And it's usually around the 18th or 19th of October. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I love the most is, is the international dinner, which is part of it. And uh, Matthews, because of where it is and how it is, uh, is a, uh, an incredibly integrated school. The married student housing is there, and um, the what now? The married student housing yes. uh, for the University of Texas. Is, is near there, so a lot of the children oh, I of, see. Okay. of chi uh, a lot of the children of students at the university who come from all over, mm -hmm. from it's an international population, international, quite international, uh, um, uh, Asia, um, Korea, 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 Africa, yeah. all over, uh, and it's great, and and it gives our children exposure uh, that 
that you just can't get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And so Octoberama really represents that. And there's all kinds of performance uh, from everyone that just, you know, it's all homegrown stuff. Mm -hmm. And of course the food is great. <laughs> you, uh, you perform there? At the yes, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You've done that before and we'll be doing it again this year? Mm, probably so. Good. Probably so. All right, uh -huh. so if folks want to see more of what they just got a little bit of a glimpse of here, they can uh, come to Octoberama at Matthew School. That's right. Okay. <laughs> and uh, your, uh, your interest in international uh, uh, relationships and uh, groups is part of your, um, I mean, within the church, do you have what you call an integrated church in that regard? No, we don't. <laughs> you don't? But we are looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the churches tend to be sometimes the most segregated of yes. uh, communities. Yes. <clears throat> and you're opening yourself to trying to include that uh, diversity? We would be delighted for that to happen. Uh, in terms of our ministry, we have uh, uh, student family services. Uh, one of our, the director of that teaches English classes to the uh, married student housing uh, uh, parents that are uh, that need help with the English language. Mm -hmm. uh, so part of our ministry is is for uh, an international population. Uh, our services on Sunday morning are are open and and we welcome uh, everyone. Okay. Well, I think that one of the things that the closing minute or so that we have here that just again came in passing very quickly, but. I think it's significant. You said you were drawn to a tree. Is that a tree oh, by the church? Uh, yeah, it's, a, uh -huh, it's, it's in the front. And uh, the Sundance is, is uh, traditionally done with a tree. Um, and the idea is that you put prayer ties on the trees and, and at, at a certain time of the year the prayer ties are put on the tree and, and this is to give thanks for all the blessings that you've had in the past and also to, to, um, to express your hopes and your prayers. For the future, prayer ties. Prayer ties. Yeah, they, they take the form. Uh, they take any number of forms, from little colored ribbons to little bags with things in them, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the idea that the sun and the wind and the rain and all of the elements uh, connect to the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And so, also, if you want to send messages to your ancestors, for example. I see. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's a lot of significance just in in the tree itself. Oh, absolutely. The the the, the ceremony is a living ceremony. Mm -hmm. And it is one that doesn't happen just that one day, but it continues throughout the okay. year. Okay. Well, I wish we could continue this throughout uh, the time to come, but we're having to bring this to a close. And I would like to thank you, Nancy and Daniel, for being here it's today with us and for thank Terry you. being with us earlier. These folks uh, from St. Luke's Methodist Church are, have really been a blessing to us, and we would like to ask you to join us again next week for our next edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. I'm Richard Thompson. On behalf of Austin Metropolitan Ministries, peace be with you.